I was running into an issue where my Tortoise TTS models were repeating and having weird sounds at the end of sentences, so I want to share with you how I solved that issue over this weekend of doing a lot of testing and training. And to give some quick background, here's a sentence that I'm going to generate audio for using one of my initial bad models, and sometimes the output it produces is actually decent, but a majority of times it's unusable, so I'm going to generate and Pay particular attention to the end of the audio, so let's go ahead and play it. Not enough to go to the nearest mall to do some shopping and eat some lunch. Even so, he could only be called penniless. And there you go, there is a little bit of aberrations at the end, a little bit of breathing or weird noise that occurs at the end of the sentences, and that was present in so many of my models that I was training over this weekend and I even have an entire document where I wrote everything that occurred so if you want to stop and take a read of my you know little scribbles you can go ahead and read this I'm not going to go over this document in today's video now if I go to one of the models that I successfully trained and then reload the TTS with it I'm going to regenerate that same sentence and then we'll take a listen to hear how it sounds. And let's take a quick listen. More than enough to go to the nearest mall to do some shopping and eat some lunch. Even so, he could only be called penniless. Okay, and there you go. At the end of the sentence, it has no aberrations and it just ends smoothly. So this model does have its own issues, but um, it's much better than the initial models that I was training. And I want to go over what exactly I did and everything that contributed to it. So first, the biggest thing was the data set having issues with it. So because the data set had um, a little bit of noise at the end of the audio, it ended up resulting in those models where you're getting weird noises at the end. And I want to give you a quick sample of that real quick so that you can see what I mean. So here's an actual sample real quick. We'll take a quick listen and listen to the end of the audio. The weather, however, is not my biggest issue. So in that data set clip, you can hear a little bit of a <sighs> at the end which is breathing and is very normal for when you are speaking and when I did a split for all of the data that I was using in training this voice it ended up resulting in a lot of sentences that had that exact same split so that was a big issue and one thing that I tried doing was cutting each audio sample by a specific amount by 0.35 seconds and this did result in something that was a little bit better but it still wasn't as good as I needed it to. So I ended up re-splitting it with Whisper. So if you don't know what Whisper is, I'll give you a quick sample. So here I have a terminal window with my virtual environment activated for Whisper X and we're gonna, going to split or we're gonna create subtitles for that audio file. So if I type in DIR, you can see that I have an audio file in here. And so if I do Whisper X, which is the command line tool, um, I do have a video on how I go and install that. But if I do Whisper X and then I do that audio file file and then do output format to SRT. It's going to use Whisper to transcribe the audio and generate an SRT file which is basically just a subtitle file. So here we are performing the transcription and then if I go into this test folder you can now see that I have an SRT file. So what an SRT file basically is is a timing for um, you know whatever speech is being spoken. So now that I've got an SRT file, what I can do is um, run a script to split that audio based on the timing. And so what I have here is a script that I can do this pretty handily with. So Python split single um, py. I can now choose the WAV file and then I can choose the subtitle file um, and then output folder two segment the wave file or the audio file and so if we take a look real quick at the um, size of it you can see that it cut off some audio at the end because it is now 357 kilobytes instead of four, uh, 459 kilobytes so let's go ahead and take a listen of before and after here is before the weather however is not my biggest issue and then here is after the weather however is not my biggest issue so there you go. So that one cuts out that breathing at the end, which helps to reduce that repetition in the out and the in the model at the end of it. So um, what I ended up doing was running a script that segmented all of the cut audio files one more time 
I basically used the um, the audio splitter whisper that I went over on my channel. I used it twice on a model or a data set and cut it with a initial round and then I split and cut all of it in a second round. So that resulted in a data set that was much cleaner without all of the breathing at the end and allowed me to train a much better model. However, the there is an issue with it if you um, listen to the end of the audio segment here. The weather, however, is not my biggest issue. It cuts off at ish. So it doesn't say issue. And so I do need to have a little bit of padding for um, my script so that it can maybe have a little bit of SRT padding so it doesn't cut off the end of the sentences. And that shows itself being present in my end model. So if we take a listen to this initial model um, or the final model that I did um, before this video, listen to what it says at lunch, which is the middle of the sentence. More than enough to go to the nearest mall to do some shopping and eat some lunch. Even so, he could only be called penniless. So it kind of cuts off lunch there, and I believe that is a transfer because of how the data set um, samples are, where a lot of these sentences are cut off a little bit too short, and that results in, um, you know, some sentences like lunch getting cut off. So. I do have to run additional training on that just to uh, verify that my assumption is correct in there, but I do think it is correct because once um, I re-whispered my initial data set, the models sounded way, way better. Um, and so I had done nine training sets. I had done nine trainings with the previous um, data set that, was, that wasn't that good. Um, and then I did two more after that where I had re-whispered the already whispered split audio. And that resulted in a model that was much better. Now for the training, I did play around a little bit with the text LR ratio and the mel LR ratio to see if I could get um, it learning an accent a little bit better. And I do think text LR ratio plays a big factor in training on accents. And so um, what I found was that 0 0.5 to 1 allowed me to train the accent a little bit faster or a little bit better um, on the model and a little bit more accurate to the data set than say the default, which by default, the Git Ecker Tortoise TTS training um, configuration is set at 0 0.01. And so the author of the um, of this repository here, the one that I use in his wiki area, um, he goes over this hyperparameter that you can um, adjust, which he has here. It says uh, for text LR uh, weight governs how much to train the text portion phonemes of the model. And so for English, he recommends that you um, just leave it at default. And then for non-English, you set it at one as you're teaching the model a new language. Well, in this case, we are kind of teaching the model a new style of English. So that's why I increase the text LR ratio to one in this case, or 0.5. Um, and to my ears, it sounds better than 0.01. Now you can use 0.01. It actually does still produce fantastic um, prosody and intonation for at least British speaking voices. So um, let me just load in one real quick. And then um, I generated a sentence with that model I had trained at 0.01. So let's go ahead, take a listen. More than enough to go to the nearest mall to do some shopping and eat some lunch. Even so, he could only be called penniless. And so to me, that still sounds fantastic. Um, but like I said, at the end of these sentences, at the end of the audio, there is um, aberrations, some noise. And that is because of the way or the data set that it was trained on. But yeah, just a quick little video on uh, what I was doing this weekend. I was just doing a lot of training and a lot of testing, and it takes quite a bit of time. So. Um, these were kind of my discoveries, I would say, of what made my tortoise training sessions result in better models. And that was refining the data set, of course. Um, and that means, you know, data set is king when it comes to training these new models. So 
Make sure that you listen to your data set, listen for weird things that are occurring. Most likely, if your model is producing a certain sound or a certain artifact, it's most likely present inside of your data set. And so if you are getting repetition at the end of your sentences, um, as a lot of my initial models were also repeating sentences at the end, make sure that your data set doesn't end in long pauses or breathing or stuff like that. You want to have it as clear and concise as possible. But yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Just a short one. Um, and uh, yeah, see y'all later.